Hello and welcome. Well, my retirement bike is finally finished. As you may recall if you've seen my previous videos, in June of 2020, I am retiring. Yes, I have reached that certain age. And I decided I wanted to give myself a nice retirement gift. So I was going to get a nice road bike. And then I was persuaded that I ought to build one. Why not? I love building bikes. I love tinkering with machines of all sorts. So I went ahead and did it. I started with the bare frame and fork. And I added parts that I specifically chose to suit my needs and my budget. And uh, I ended up with what I think is a darn nice bike. Now, I am still waiting for my clipless shoes to arrive. My first ever, if you can believe that, at my age, which is closing in on 60. Um, so I have not taken it for a real shakedown cruise. As you saw at the beginning, I did have it out on my street, just doing a quick little check of the shifters and the fit. Uh, I do have to tweak some of the uh, settings, like the uh, the bar and the uh, the seat height, but that's not a big deal. I'm just going to wait until I have those shoes to make sure that I get the correct settings. Don't have to do it all over again. Now this video is not going to be one of those ones that shows you in great depth how to build a bike. Ooh, there are plenty of those out there already. You don't need me rehashing old ground. But if you do need help or you're trying to learn how to do these things as I was, then I suggest RJ the Bike Guy's channel. I suggest GCN Tech channel and I suggest the Park Tool channel. Between the three of those I think you can learn everything you really need to know about how bikes work and why they work the way they do. And knowing that puts you well on the path to being able to do what I did. Now what I am going to do in this video is examine the major subgroups of the components and explain my thought process behind choosing the ones that I did. And with that, let's get going. Let's begin up front and up top. Here we have an up-end bike, U-P-A-N-B-I-K-E, I presume that's how it's pronounced, 420 millimeter handlebar. It's aluminum. I chose it for the compact drops. I'm not a big fan, as I've said elsewhere, of riding way down, so I like this rather shallow drop. For shifting, I've got a pair of uh, Micro New 2x10s. The model number is R10. Now, it's interesting to me that that is shown as both micro shift and micro new as well as wake on some of the various online retailers so i'm really not sure who makes it but it looks an awful lot like a micro shift to me except for the plastic levers rather than metal they went on easily as with any of these drop bar bikes all you have to do is put an allen wrench through the little recess, there's a dimple right there, and that accesses the clamp bolt. There's only one way for the shifter cables to come out, and that's through the interior sides, and the brake cables exit underneath the hoods. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I also chose this wake stem it's 110 millimeters long with a 17 degree rise. Again, I chose this because I don't like feeling like I'm dropping way, way over the bars when I'm riding in the drops. Now, this is actually a mountain bike stem, but it works for my purposes and I'm happy.
The brakes, front and rear, are mid-level Tektro dual pivot brakes. And, you know, the, these went on, again, as easy as the brakes on any other bike I've ever done. One thing that I had to do differently is right there. Right there. The bolt wasn't quite long enough, so the brake body was rubbing on the fork. So I used a pair of concave convex spacers from a spare brake shoe and that gave me both the positioning and the separation that I needed. Once again, it went on quite easily, pretty unremarkable. The rear brake is identical to the front brake other than the length of the bolt Again, that's standard, nothing particularly unusual about that. And the limited test ride that I had with that, it worked perfectly. Just had to tweak the uh, separation a little bit, but, you know, that's true anytime you do something new on a bike. The rear wheel is also an Alex Rim 700C by 25. And the rear tire is also a Continental Ultra Sport. And the rear wheel also has a Shimano Claris hub with uh, the uh, free hub. Let's see if I can. There we go. Claris. The drivetrain consists of a Shimano 5034-tooth two-speed crankset, BW look compatible pedals, my first ever clipless, so that's going to be interesting, a micro shift front derailleur, and a micro shift R9, oddly enough, 10-speed rear derailleur. Now I did check, and although it's labeled R9, it is in fact a 10 speed. The cassette is a Tiagra 11 to 34 tooth. Of course, that's a gear that it's never meant to run in, so there'll always be noise in this particular combination. Well, there you have it. My retirement bike, and how and why I came to the point that I did with it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed putting this bike together. And if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and give me a big old thumbs up. All kidding aside, that really does help the channel. Below left will be a link to the playlist for this retirement bike build. And below right is another link to another video that I think you'll enjoy. And as always, seriously, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it when you do. Goodbye.